seizing morning men start with 10 the buffer hello everybody welcome back a little bit of sort of sort of a nautical not today hence we're abusing the buffer but what i thought i'd show you today is how to put seizing into a rope and as you can see here i've made a soft shackle using the lanyard knot at this end and if you don't know what a soft shackle is basically it's a loop where you can close that loop with a button knot on the end and you can then secure something using let's get that out of the way it looks ugly with that in with this particular thing here so if you want to know how to make this particular knot on the end of a rope which is a lanyard knot at the end of this video i will put a link in for you to actually be able to watch that next but what we're going to concentrate on today no we're not making the complete soft shackle what we're going to concentrate on today is the seizing that i've put into this this one's just decorative at the top end here but this one here forms the eye in our rope and it's not this seizing isn't designed to create an eye in a rope and you can use it for lifting heavy weights this is just purely for decoration. So if you want to just make your work look a little bit more decorative by putting some seizing in and also forming an eye so we end up with a nice soft shackle, that's what we're going to do today. But, of course, in Johnny's world, we use the biggest ropes that we can get hold of in order to show you how to do particular jobs. In this case, I haven't cut my ends off, but the seizing, as you can see here, the seizing, and it's quite nice and tight on here, I've put paracord seizing around an eye that I've created in a rope, and that's what I'm going to show you today, is how to do your seizing on a rope. And this is, don't forget, this is more decorative than anything else. And also, at the end of the video, I will put links up to show you how to make this particular knot for your soft shackle and other information as well. So anyway, without further ado, let's get knotting. Oh, did you see the finger? See you on the other side. Right, so as you can see here, on my soft shackle that I've got here, the seizing is rather delicate and it looks, it looks good. It looks good wrapped around there. It just makes, puts a nice touch to the soft shackle itself and in fact sometimes when you use different colors it looks good as well now just be advised with this you want to use a fine cord for seizing because when you watch this particular demonstration today here when you're using larger cordage like i've got here this isn't okay you would at times seize an eye into an end of a fairly thick rope here but if you're using something like paracord, every bump, everything is more pronounced. So don't, don't judge this particular exercise as being the finished article. Your finished article will be done with a finer cord like here. Okay, so anyway, let's get on and let's actually tie this here. Now, the first thing that I do when I'm seizing is we need to have a starting knot. Now, if, for example, you have some cordage into which you can splice an eye, then splice an eye into that cordage so that you end up with an eye like so. Other people, when they actually tie their seizing, they start off with a clove hitch. I'm not against the clove hitch, but my personal preference is that we start off with a timber hitch. And the reason, okay, the clo there's, I've got nothing against the clove hitch, just the timber hitch for today's little exercise is my favourite. And also the reason for using an eye splice is it creates a low profile. In other words, if you were to tie a huge knot here, that knot would be so pronounced, it makes the work look a little bit ugly. And so when you tie, say, for example, a timber hitch or a clove hitch, the knot itself has a very low profile and has very little impact on what you're doing. So anyway, let's get on and tie the timber hitch. So as you can see, I've brought my rope together at this point here to form an eye. And so that would be the eye that I've created here 
where my seizing is. Now the next thing that I'm going to do is, I've said we're going to do a timber hitch for this one. So the way that I tie my timber hitch is this. If you want to know different ways of tying the timber hitch, I will put a link in the description below. But what I've done now is I've passed my working end underneath my rope and then I bring it around over the top of my rope and there's my working end and then the next thing I do is pass my working end, my pink working end, underneath itself at that point and then bring it round so that we are now, it now has locked that cord in place there. And the next thing that I want to do is this working end here, I want to tuck it underneath there four or five times. So here we go. So I'll just take a little bit more through. So go around and tuck it underneath once. And then go around twice. And then three times. And then four times. And normally when you're using a timber hitch for working, you would tie it five times minimum or, or go underneath five times on a minimum at this point here. And the other thing that we want to do as well is on a timber hitch, when you're using a timber hitch properly, these leads that we have tucked in under there are not bunched up. They are spread along the length of the actual rope itself. Now that I've done that, I can then get hold and I can pull up really, really tight with that and that will lock it in place. That is now locking it in place as I pull it up tight. And I'm really pulling on that now and it has locked it nicely into place. And all I do now is just take my cordage and bring it round and work it around going up towards the eye at that point there and bring it in tight and make sure it's nice and close to the previous turn and then just keep doing that. Bring it round, pull it up tight. Nice and tight, as tight as you can because what you want to do is make sure that your eye is locked in place and that's all I'm doing is bring it around my rope and you can see here now we've got a knot at the starting point there. It's There's no lump there, a little bit of a profile here, but when you're using the fine cordage that I've used on my soft shackle, not a problem. And then just keep doing that. And so I'm now going to go and wind this round until I have got enough seizing on there to do the next bit. So I'll come back to you in a second when I've done that. So I'm at the point now where I've gone round one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven times. So I've gone round eleven times. I can go longer if I want to. You want a fair amount around it to keep it secure. And I mean, the other thing to warn you about is this is not the way to put an eye splice into a rope because it's just it's not strong enough this type of seizing. So the next thing I've done, I've done. I haven't done it yet. The next thing I do is. I just put my finger at the top there and hold that cord in position. And the next thing I want to do is pass all of my working end down through the eye of my loop at that point there. And what I'm trying to do as well is in doing that is just try and get it so that this is nice and snug inside. Just fiddle it a bit, pull it up tight and then bring it up so it's nice and neat inside there. And there's my working end, so I've gone through the eye. I then take it around the back and then pass it down through where those two ropes meet at that point and then bring it up again. And then bring it up and pull it nice and tight. And so now you can see I've gone round, whoa, I pull. If I get it in screen in shot, you can see now I've gone down around the back between the two there and I've come out on this side here. And the next thing I do is exactly the same again. I go down over the top here through the eye 
So go down through the eye and then pull it nice and tight and then run it parallel to the previous one at this point here. So when it's running parallel at that point there, put your finger on it there, pass it down between your ropes like so, bring it round, pull it up nice and tight again, there we go, and then take the excess through and we now have parallel cords on both sides. And then take it down through the eye again one more time and then pull it up tight. And now the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to need to tie this off so that it stays nice and securely at this point here. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I need to lace my paracord onto my lacing needle and the ends are just a little bit fray. So what I'm going to do is just bring that in together, burn my fingers and then attach my lacing needle onto there. Okay. The other thing is, I mean, with regards, remember at the beginning I mentioned to you about using a knot with a low profile. As you can see here, I've covered my lighter with some hitching and this was started off using the timber hitch as well, which is a low profile knot. So in other words, you don't get a horrible lump where you actually started your work from. And that's the advantage of using a timber hitch to start your decorative knot work off. Right, so now that I've done that, I've threaded my, you'll thread your needle, whichever needle you're using. So you thread your needle, and then the next thing that you want to do is you want to then bring it so that this cord here goes underneath. So we're going to go underneath, let's see, point that out. We're going to go underneath this one here. So bring it round so it goes underneath that one there. It will be a bit tight, but just force it through. And then, because you want it nice and tight, and then once we've done that, pull it through and so that we've got it nice and tight. Once we've done that then, we then go, I'm pulling that a bit tighter. I then go, take it underneath this one here, and then bring it over the other one underneath and then under that one there. And you can see here now, so we're going under the outside, over the middle one, which is coming out just here, under the outside at that point here. And just take it round, take it through, pull through the excess, pull through the excess and you can see here now, that we are starting to form a nice knot here and then just pull that up nice and tight and you can usually pull that knot so that it goes more into the crux of where the two ropes join here. But you can see here now that what we've done, it's not as, it's not as neat and as tidy as I would like because it's just more pronounced when you're using thicker cordage. But you can see here now, it's locked in position on the back. I could tell you that is as hard as nails now that as, we, as we've wrapped it and then the next thing that I would do is I would trim my ends nice and flush to make it look nice neat and tidy and then you end up with some nice seizing like I've done here on my soft shackle and don't forget if you want to know how to make this particular soft shackle there is a video on that and I will put a link about this shackle at the end of the video. So anyway, trim the ends off, make it look neat and smart, and that's it. You have then done your seizing on the end of a rope. So once again, thanks for watching. I'll see you again next time. Take care, bye-bye.